I really enjoy this style of bass fishing. It's kind of, it's sort of nearly surf fishing because it's last light and we've got the tide stripping out. We're using these sort of, these small waves, trying to find fish hunting in amongst them. And it's real kind of searching fishing. I'll use, I'll use the lures that give me maximum distance and swim shallow to cover lots of water. This kind of fishing, I'll turn to what I call the sort of searching lures. Those lures that cast a long way, swim shallow, so they're covering me lots of water. Things like the Surf Seeker, and especially the 30 and the 35 gram, because with these kind of rods, I can move those lures fast and really cast a long way. Then the Sand Eel Pencil, I love. It gives me a very, very different profile with that very subtle kind of slight wiggle action, and obviously, you know, it couldn't be more sandy like if you tried. And then when I haven't got true surf like this, I'm going to cover as much water as I can, see if I can find bass as we lose that light coming on the feed. Yeah. That light's getting lower, so I changed to a darker colored seeker. I don't know if that's made a difference, but a second shot with it, I think a bass slammed me. Oh, it's not a big fish, but in the surf, every bass in any kind of surf is worth double. It is not big. But look, you can see how that single hook is perfect. Look at those fins flaring. They are small, big, I don't care. They are so angry. In that surf, they are so fired up. Look, I can't, I know I'm banging on about color change. I, Barbless hook, gone. No harm to the fish whatsoever. Right. But there's one, he's saying I am, there's one, there's more, he says. <laughs> I just, yeah. they're not big, but it's just, it is such fun catching bass in turbulence. I think it might be the same fish. It is small, but at least when I said they're one, there'd be more. And see, look, the great thing is this, I haven't even got to touch the bass to unhook it. Barbless hook, barbless single. Thank you very much, fish. Look, they're not big, but I promise you, any bass you catch in turbulence is worth two or three with how hard they, for their comparative size, how hard they hit, how hard they scrap, it's just, yo. <laughs> when you need to search water, I honestly, the seeker is insane. It's not a big fish at all but they just slam it in the surf. Oh, I just came off. It's about that big. Well, it wasn't, it's was about, it wasn't a big fish, but that's a good sign. Absolutely 
When you've got any kind of wave on, when they want it, they absolutely slam it. It's brilliant. I hope you can see that I'm doing nothing more here than fishing the seeker how it was designed. Shallow water, long casting, cover huge amounts of water. Whack and crank, whack it out, wind it in. You know, the complicated bits in a lot of this bass fishing is the where and the when. Where do I go? When do I go? what conditions, moon phase, that kind of stuff. A lot of the actual lure techniques, I think, are really simple. I'm using certain types of lures to do certain kinds of jobs. You're trusting in their actions, their casting, the depth they swim. And this seeker and the sand hill pencil, they cover a huge amount of water. And for a metal lure, you might look and think, oh, it sinks deep, it doesn't. You crank that thing, it's swimming kind of that deep under the water. Absolutely, it's such a deceptively simple lure. I never, ever, ever go bass fishing anywhere without at least a seeker in my box. If I need to cover water, this is the lure every time. What probably won't come across on camera here, okay? You know, this isn't this is sort of gentle gentle surf last light what i've got here is kind of fairly uniform waves breaking but out where the, the camera won't pick up you won't see there's a little bit of a rip and both fish i've caught were on, on the edge of that rip i know you might have seen me earlier on kind of like looking and wandering just look, casting a specific area there's the edge of a rip just curling out there and the way those waves break and the, the rip breaks the uniformity of the waves that's where I'm casting so you just I'm losing the light I'm just on the edge there a lot of the surf fishing I tend to do especially at home and out here in Ireland a lot of it seems to be, tends to fish the best. You know, pick your standard kind of surf beach, even though these aren't big surf conditions. And if I was to target a surf beach for the first time, you know, it's kind of onshore wind, giving you that short, choppy sea and nice waves, I would get down there two hours before low water. I'd fish it two hours down and the first two hours of the flood. And if I get fish, great, I'm sussing it out. But then I will start working from there, okay? I really like, I can think of you know, X amount of beaches I might fish. And I, yeah, I reckon, apart from a couple, you know when you get those beaches that sometimes dump quite hard and it gives you that kind of scour out there. Then I like a really big tide. I like those waves dumping on that scour because I think you find the bass in the gutter. But generally, you know, I'm thinking about the beach I fish at home. Generally fishing around that low water period. And sometimes, you know, let's say you are fishing for that four hour stretch. And let's say it's fishing well, you know, let's have the perfect, the perfect situation. You might find you get a quiet period just before low and just after. Stick at it. I get it home all the time. It goes quiet, you think, oh, where are the fish gone? Wait, wait, wait. The tide starts creeping in, flooding in. Bang, you get them again. It's just, it's that kind of mobile searching, wandering around, having a look and search water. Use it, the lures are simple, techniques are simple, search water.